Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Mayer. Thank you for tuning in. This video will discuss corresponding parts of congruent triangles, or abbreviated as CPCTC. And by the end of it, you want to be able to say, I can use a congruent statement to find missing values between two congruent triangles. Looking at our example, uh, what we see is that the triangles are congruent. We need to find all missing measurements using CPCTC. So, the first things first, I want to point out, this is our congruence statement. This thing tells us all the answers that we need to know. Angle GHJ has to go in the same order as triangle LKM. So using that information, we are just going to start looking at our diagrams and making sure that we can figure out which side lengths and which angle measures are going to match up. So the first one asks for HJ. If I look at HJ, or the last two letters in the first triangle, that means if I look at the last two letters in the second triangle, they are KM. So HJ is going to match KM. Always make sure you're labeling your diagrams to help you visualize this. I already noticed this is given to me. This information is seven centimeters, so therefore this is also seven centimeters. I've already got one answer down. Moving to the next one, GJ. GJ is the first and last vertices in the first triangle. L and M is the first and last vertices in the second triangle. So GJ is going to match with, I'm going to use two dashes here, it's going to match with LM. Again, already see I have the answer here, so I can just bring it over. This is eight centimeters, and I have that value. Last side length is LK. Hopefully you're realizing by process of elimination, it should be the last number, the last value we've not yet used. Let's see if that's true. If I look at LK, LK is the first and second letters, and G and H are the first and second letters. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that with three dashes, and L and K with three dashes, perfect. So bring this guy over, this is C, six centimeters. So I have all my side lengths, and I'm ready to move to my angle measures. Using the congruent statement just like I did for the side lengths, I'm noticing that vertex J is the last vertex in the first triangle and therefore would match with M which is the last. So I'm going to put one curve, one arc, J is going to match with M and I already have a measurement for angle M. So I can just bring that 59 degrees right over here for angle J and I have that answered. Next is angle G. If I look at angle G, Angle G is the first vertex in the first triangle. It would match with L, but I look at L and I have nothing. So I'm getting stuck here. So you have to ask yourself, what else do I know about triangles? Because I only have one measurement and I already used it. I don't know either here. What else do I know about triangles that I can actually use to find uh, missing information? If you recall, the triangle angle sum theorem, what this states is that if I add all three angles of a triangle up, if I add all the measurements up, I will get 180 degrees. That's the sum of the angle measurements. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that here. I know that angle H is 62 degrees, plus angle J is 59 degrees, plus the measure of angle G. So let's say maybe this is our X value, plus X degrees is going to be 180 degrees. At this point, what we want to do is combine like terms. Solve this as normal. Using circles and squares, these two are the um, uh, like terms in this equation, and this one is not. So these two I'm going to combine, and I'm finding that if I add those two up, I get 121. This is not like terms. I leave it separate. Equals 180. And now I subtract this to find my x by itself. I'm isolating my x, and I find 180 minus 121 is 59 degrees. At this point, what I found, again, this is the measure of angle G. So I can go ahead and put that right here. Again, this is a coincidence that I've got the two 59s in both, or for two verti uh, vertices in the triangle. That's not always going to be true. Let's see if this helps us with other information here. The next one I need to find, the next angle I need to find is angle K. K is in the middle. I look over here and it matches with H. So H, I'm gonna put two arcs, because I already used one right there. H is gonna match with K. I'll put two arcs at K. And that means K has to be the 62, carry that over. So this one is 62 degrees. 
And last but not least, I'm looking for L. L would match with that G that I just found. G was 59, so that means that L has to be 59 as well. And this is our last value. We are set to go. Thanks again for tuning in. See you soon.